Hello everybody and welcome to an exciting list video and this is exciting because as you can see there's someone new to the Arkham Horror videos here. This is Eric, a longtime friend of mine. Uh, Eric and I play a lot of different games on the channel, but Eric and I are very soon going to start playing Arkham Horror on the channel. Yes. So uh, a little bit of background. Uh, I'll let Eric talk eventually. I'm sure yeah, in these videos I do a long-winded intro and then I let everyone else I, speak. I just want to pull this <laughs> off and reveal that I've no jaw. Yeah, yeah that's, why, that's actually why you're wearing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Eric and I, Eric actually introduced me to Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. Eric is the reason I played that game for the first time and the reason why I'm into Arkham Horror to the extent that I am today. Uh, at this point now, I'm so deep into Arkham Horror the card game that I have lost perspective that um, uh, I think is actually missing from this channel and it's why I'm very excited to get Eric involved in Arkham and also these videos is a new player's perspective. Because Travis Burton and I have been playing Arkham since day one, right? I play Arkham three days a week. Wow. So, like, I have... Like, there is no, there's no new Arkham to me. So all the perspectives that I come with is just, like, I look at a card and I'm like, oh, this... I'll know immediately if it's a card I want to play, right? So I thought Eric and I are going to be playing Arkham together. I'm curious to see what Eric's kind of the investigators that Eric's wants to play the most are. So Eric uh, has played two games of Arkham. One was the first time, so it, it was the time where I played Schizo Tool with one core set and it was the worst Arkham I, I almost, I hated the game. It was a horrible experience for a new player and Eric played Daisy. Then Eric and I also did a test run where I played Parallel Roland, and once again, I let Eric down. I, it was like one of those things where, with a new player, I was like, I can play a worse deck, and it'll be better. Because, <laughs> you know, I can fool around a bit, but no, I can't. Because I forget, once again, without that perspective, that a new player won't understand the tempo of the game. <laughs> so, Eric went through the binder of investigators. They're all in here. Uh, and I didn't guide anything. I just, I let you read and I let you decide what you kind of were interested in. So this list is a perspective of a new player, what investigators interest them and why. And then also I'm gonna add some perspective of why these might or may not be a good investigator for a new player. However, with that said, I trust Eric. So Eric can play some of them, even if, spoiler alert, a lot of them are more advanced investigators. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, for the most part. Uh, and you also will make Bryn and Travis happy because two of their favorite investigators are on your list. Ooh. None of mine are. None of mine are. But that's that's why this game is so good is because there's so many different styles of play. So why don't we dive in? Uh, we'll start with you about what interests you. I'll, I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll read the character aloud and say like what their thing and abilities are for people who might be watching because these slides don't have them. And then I'll throw it to Eric and then I'll finish it up. So And, and just before yeah. we begin, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, even though I've played two games of it, I don't honestly really remember the mechanics at yeah. all. I am basing this entirely off of the fact that one of the things I like about the Arkham games is that a lot of them share key words. So yeah. having played the Arkham board game, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, investigate is something you have to do. Yeah. Symbol matching is something you have to do, but I actually don't yeah. know any of that. Yeah, like getting clues is something you have to do. Yeah. Like dealing damage is defeating monsters. Yeah, like the through line of the Arkham Files games, definitely, yeah. All right, so we actually are doing something we've never done before. Honorable mentions. This is actually a first for all of our list videos, which is wild. So Eric has two honorable mentions that they want to talk about, and the first one is Kelvin Wright. So Kelvin's ability is zero stats across the board and gets increased book and brain uh, for the amount of horror on him and increased fist and foot for the amount of damage on him. So what drew you... What, why did Kelvin make your honorable mention top five? Well, Kelvin I actually almost made it to the top five list <laughs> uh, because the first time I saw the zeros across the board, I was like, what is this? What's happening with this misprint? <laughs> um, and then reading his power, I was like, okay, so this character is a doozy. This is a character you ride the ragged edge on mm -hmm. trying to find out what that balance is for going too far versus losing. Mm -hmm. And having seen some of the other stat lines and seeing that generally the range is like one to four, I was like, okay, so Calvin can very easily be just twos across the board and 4-4. Four, four. 
would would that even be good? <laughs> what's 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 good for this character? Uh -huh. But he's also an interesting character to me because he's flexible. Like uh -huh. unlike every other character in the game, he can adjust his stats and play with his stats and thus kind of fit himself, I assume, into almost any role in the game. Yeah, so going a bit further deeper into the game, there's five classes. Guardian, which is blue, uh, they are primarily damage dealer and like tanky support mm -hmm. and like okay. healing. There's yellow, which are seekers. They are primarily clue getters and they can like, they're probably the best at like general movement across the board and card draw. They're very good at card draw and that means they're good. <laughs> uh, rogue, which are green, they're very flexible and they can do things um, I, they're the closest to black in the sense that they can do things, but they have to do it their way. And their way may be less efficient, and they're also kind of more combo focused. They do better when they have more cards together. Purples are mystics. They're really good at dealing with the encounter deck and like casting spells. Uh, and like using their brain to advance. And then there is survivors, which kind of just can scrap their way through it. So you had a very apt reading that Carson can kind of fill what hole is needed with his deck. Yeah. Sorry, Calvin can. Calvin can. The only reason he didn't end up making it ultimately was because when I was looking at his cards, I found a card that was like, here's how you deal damage to yourself. Mm -hmm. But there was no card on how to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, there's a part of this puzzle I'm not getting. Because how do you get yourself back to the place you want to be on another stat line? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why that's why Calvin only made it so far. So Calvin is a very, you probably can guess this, is a very complex investigator to play. And is probably one of the last investigators we would recommend to new players. Because he's so fragile. Actually, so we uh Bryn, Travis, and I have all played him, and we've all had to retire him in a campaign. Because you're trauma so trauma is damage that carries over mm -hmm. so when you gain trauma if you have two mental trauma you start with two horror on you which means your stats are better but now you can take four less damage or three less damage like well two less damage than you could have before yeah uh so he's tough to pilot he's very fun and i think he got a bunch of new cards and once again like for me with eric i'm not gonna say no if eric wants to play kelvin eric can play kelvin but like for a new player kelvin is a higher complexity investigator due to those abilities that made him so appealing to you yeah all right our next honorable mention is preston fairmont so preston fairmont's one across the board any mo any money that he gains from a player card effect goes on his inheritance and then his inheritance gives you four money every turn but it goes away at the end all the money on it goes away and then you can transfer money from your inheritance to preston as an action so why preston i hate preston <laughs> i chose preston because preston is the most flavorful card i think in terms of what his little scroll on the bottom of his name says mm -hmm. and what he does yeah i hate this one stat line <laughs> i'm just gonna spend money to pass a challenge even against like cthulhu yeah. sort of behavior it is that is his flavor and like he pays people to do things for him with all of his money yeah no it is a flavorful win that is something that you said when you were going through that it impressed you how much design space they have with the investigators and how flavorful a lot of them oh, are oh yeah yeah but just i fucking hate that sorry to swear i don't no, know no, you're swearing it's okay yeah go I, for it i hate the image of this guy just being like cthulhu turning to a swat team and being like yeah. preston uh he's actually this last year he's become one of my favorites his play style is very fun but that's because I, i've been growing on the rogue class the rogue class has become much more appealing to me okay so now we're in the official top five. These are the top five investigators Eric wants to play the most. We have Diana Stanley. So this is a one brain, three book, three fist, three foot mystic. And the ability that Diana has, summing it up really quickly, is that whenever you cancel or ignore a game effect, you can put the card in her basement underneath her card. You get to draw a card and gain a resource, but then for each card underneath Diana, you get plus one brain, and you get to, uh, you know, have a five of them there. So you can get to six brain total with Diana. So why Diana? Well, first off, um... I love that you called her a three-foot investigator. Um, <laughs> I've never heard that phrase before. It's great. Yeah. Um, second, I really like the... I, I looked at her item, and I looked at her power, and I went, this is a really fun character, because this feels like a character who grows. Mm -hmm. This feels like a character who starts as this redeemed cultist flavor-wise. She's got good stat lines. You know, you might actually be willing to fight with mm -hmm. that three fight. I don't know if it's any good. Mm -hmm. But then her weapon is like, oh, by the way, you can switch uh, your punch symbol for your brain symbol. Mm -hmm. And the more she does what she seems to be good at and has special cards on, the better she gets at doing other things with uh -huh. her powers. And I was like, I love that. I love this, like, 
character who builds on their own skills each game you play. Yeah, Diana, it's your, you nailed it again. The scaling that Diana can present to players is very powerful, and also being able to say no to a lot of game effects is a very powerful effect as well. And it feels nice where the game is like, hey, take two damage, and you're like, mm, I'm gonna get stronger instead. Like, it's a very nice, fun power loop. Um, I actually don't think, like, People might say that Diana is too complex for new players, but I think her game loop is doable for newer players with like card game experience. If you bought Arkham Horror for the first time and you're opening up and it's your first card game ever, Diana's probably out of your out of your budget. But um, for like people who've played other card games or played other Arkham Files games, Diana I think is a very playable thing. And the three fist, you have to work for it. Mm -hmm. Like a four, like basically like three is, it's gonna require a lot of work. Four, you need some work, but you can get by most tests. Um, and five is like, you very rarely need to work for it. Uh, so Diana needs work. However, it's exactly that, that shift where halfway through the game, you're like, okay, I'm done using my fist to fight or my book to investigate. I'm going to use my brain for everything because that's kind of what mystics do. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, no, all right. Let's see if you, you, you've, bat, you've batted so well. Let's see if you can continue the, the batting average to see how well you can sum up these characters. For four is... Carson Sinclair. So I'm going to just say right now, everyone on the internet is probably going, what the heck? <laughs> so Carson Sinclair was actually a very... Um, there was a lot of contention about Carson on the internet when this guy was spoiled. So Carson's ability twos across the board, and as an action, he can give an action to another player. As a free action attorney, he gets an additional action that he can give to another player. So why Carson? Because I love that. Yeah. Because the help action in 5e and like the help actions in various TTRPGs are my favorite way to play a support character. Healing someone is great. Mm -hmm. Stopping an effect is great. But the best way to help players win is to win more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to play Carson because I want to look at that player who's like Diana Sinclair up to six. And I want to be like, Diana, Diana do it again yeah that's what i want from carson mm -hmm. i don't want to necessarily play him solo i don't want him yeah. to be dealing with the problems alone yeah i want to be absolutely playing that butler you know so carson is, i've never played him with i've never even thought about playing him with two players because taking a whole player out of the board doesn't match the action and i think i think it's doable but for two players it would require a lot of work for carson um but I think it would be fun to do in the future. Like after you after you get some campaigns under your belt, I'd be willing to do, uh, I could build like a flex investigator and you can just give me a bunch of actions and we can see what happens with it. Um, Bryn's playing Carson right now on the channel and we're having a great time with Carson. He's a powerful investigator. I think a lot of the contention online was ultimately misplaced because mm. his gameplay loop is very fulfilling. And as you exactly said, an additional action for other players to do each turn is better than healing them or giving them a card because it allows them to do what they want to do. It's not limited to one thing. It's whatever they can do best to further the game state, right? Um, he is very fragile, very <sighs> fragile. I mean, he's an old fucking man, right? But I can see why you'd want to play him, and I'm not surprised, too, because he is, like, the ultimate support. Like, he is the ultimate support. Um, but we can do it one day. Uh, I'm definitely not saying no. It's just we might need to... You might need to get some experience under your belt, because I think he's... He's even more complicated than... Um than Kelvin at two players mm -hmm. just because the time is tighter in two players if we ever play at three players like if if we can convince Megan to come back and play more Arkham you can play Carson and you would have a great time I, you know it would be fun I would love to play a, a a game where I play Carson and just focus on healing effects and someone plays Calvin and we just <laughs> just do the <laughs> yeah, switch yeah, yeah. them up yep all right uh number three is Stella Clark so Stella Clark is a survivor investigator three two three four uh, 8 8 soak, so they actually have more health than other investigators do. And her, uh, sorry, her ability is very simple. It's just when you fail a test uh, in, a na in a round, you get to take an additional action. So, so why Stella? Well, so first off, um, the moment I saw that Stella was a letter carrier and her cards were themed around being a male person, mm -hmm. it made me think of there's a, um, a classic uh, science fiction film and book called The Postman. Mm -hmm. Um, it might not actually be called The Postman. Please call me out on that. <laughs> um, but it's basically about this apocalyptic uh, scenario where this letter carrier is basically going around accidentally rebuilding society by role-playing as a 
male clerk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once I saw this, I was like, okay, so how are they going to, like, is this going to be a reference to that? And I really felt it was, because I like that she is really good at coming back from a loss or a fail state. Mm -hmm. And as a player who's new to the game and doesn't didn't even realize like that those stats would have that kind of meaning, mm -hmm. it means I can mess up on a risky thing and then try something again. Mm -hmm. Or try something again with a different item, a different mm -hmm. combo, a different thing to see if I can push my advantage. A cool thing that's even further with this, a big part of Survivor's color pool is benefits while failing. So not only are you going to fail, but you can benefit from it and then still take an extra action. Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah. exactly what I want to play in a character, because it, it's, it's a way to help me almost learn the game in yeah. a way. Yeah. Uh, Stella is uh, one of our top recommendations for new players. Oh. For the exact reason you said. It allows you to not be scared of failing. There's actually a big thing that we, we've had a video where we talk about like things that characters can teach you. Uh, one of them that, uh, that didn't make Eric's list, but Zoe Samaras, she has an ability that when an enemy engages you, you gain a resource. What that does is it teaches a new player that it's okay for enemies to engage you. Not only is it your job to kill them, you want to actively hunt them out because you get rewarded for it. And like with this one, what this does is it tells you don't be afraid to fail a test because you're going to get rewarded for it. She's uh, very simple to play. She's also incredibly powerful. <laughs> she is one of the, there's some things you can do with her decks that are just like insane, but because of that and how you can build her to kind of be the scrappy survivor, she works very, very well for new players. So this is probably the one on your list that I'd say you should start with of all of them, just because it is the easiest investigator to kind of like grok while you're playing but it still can be very powerful and you can feel like you're impacting the game. So like, I think yeah, Stella's a great one. I mean, once again, I think any of them in, except for Carson would work, but Stella is like the number one green light investigator that we recommend for new players because it's just, she does a lot that's really good for new players. All right, number two, we got Safina Rousseau. So Safina is a rogue investigator with a mystic splash, 4224. Uh, it, she starts with a 13 card opening hand that she cannot mulligan. She then has to take five cards from her hand and put five events from her hand and put them in her basement uh, and she can cast those as if they were in her hand. So why Safina? Well, so Safina is actually probably the character I'm most excited about. I'm surprised I put her in two because now I'm thinking like I should have put her in one. Um, Safina... No, that's a lie, because I know who's coming <laughs> <Yeah>. up next. <laughs> Safina really excites me, mm -hmm. because Safina's got like those high stat lines. I noticed that Safina was a character that has a four and a four, and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, that's probably big. She had a big, sexy brain pool, which mm -hmm. I was really excited about. And then just the fact that I feel like she has all this cool interaction with herself. Uh -huh. She feels like a really self-contained card where she's got like, she's got your normal eight cards you've got in your hand or whatever. And then she's got these special events she can just play out. Uh -huh. And then her painter ability like uh -huh. lets you double down on one of those really cool yeah. events. And I was just like, this is a weird character. And I love this. I love, I love the amount of additional resources she lets me play into. Yeah. Yeah, and then is she the one who has the the king in yellow as a doom? No, that's Min. Oh, okay, yeah, that's Min. Yeah, but they came, but she has this. I think the stars of Hayates. So, so once again, uh, Carcosa theme. Yeah, yeah. I, and I I always love the Carcosa theming. I've always loved uh, as as a person who's neurodivergent. I also. Um, I love and hate Arkham's relationship with, mm -hmm. like, creative people are crazy. And I'm like, that's not true, but also I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Safina is one of Bryn's favorites. So okay. that, that was one of the Bryn's favorites. And I think that the, the hardest part of Safina is I think her gameplay loop is pretty straightforward. You want to play your events. The hardest thing about Safina is when you get 13 cards in your opening hand and having to decide what five events are going underneath her. Um, but other than that, I think her gameplay loop is actually pretty straightforward because you get a good chunk of resources. Her card pool is very good defensive, like her, her stat line is very good defensively because generally your, your brain and your foot are used as defensive stats. But she is able to leverage those into offensive stats because of her card pool, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I think Safina's fun and I think she would also would be a great option and it would actually be a good one to play in Carcosa because you know that's where she's from and that's where she fits and once again the our artists are all crazy it's it's the same I agree because I have the same sort of love of that kind of thing where 
I, you know, to, I feel like it, it's something that is leaked into my own creative writing too, where artists are crazy. It's just how it's just how it is. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, I think I think you'd enjoy Safina, and she's got a bunch of great cards in her pool too. Yeah, yeah. Eric actually doesn't when I when I'm saying pools, Eric's just nodding. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm like I'm like I assume pools means card pools, but I didn't realize they had special cards. Yeah, so every investigator also has special card pools. So Safina, for example, she is she can take up to level five rogue cards and le up to level two mystic cards. What's the highest level? Five. Okay, yeah. cool. Love it. So like she is a rogue mystic, right? So there's like they have different like deck building requirements for each of them, which is really cool. All right, number one, investigator for Eric is none other than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Luke Robinson, the dreamer. So Luke Robinson is a 4-3-2-3 for stat line. 5-9 was, as I learned now, you like the juicy brain. You like it to be loaded, the horror soak. Uh, Luke's ability, he has multiple abilities. Luke can do a lot of things. He can uh, smoke from his gate box, as we call it, weed, to go to his special location that's just for him. And then he can move out of that location to any uh, revealed location. But he also can play an event at an adjacent location as if he was at that location. So why Luke? What, uh, what brought you to him? Well, I mean, first off, um, I, as I as I said to Justin, I was reading this. I was like, "Oh, this is the one where you play a horror that's fighting the other horrors." Okay, I'm in. Yeah. Um, just the mental image of all of these otherwise normal investigators, and then there's this dude who's just like, "I got my cube," yeah. and then he just leaves through the wall. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I found the idea of him being able to uh, go to a secondary location mm -hmm. and then play events onto other locations kind of reminded me of um, uh, the Butler. Mm -hmm. as like a, I can support or I can play into other people's actions in a way that doesn't require the same sort of movement and the same sort of movement play style mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I uh, I just, I love the flavor text too. I'm a yeah. huge fan of the Hellraiser series. I love the Lamench configuration. Mm -hmm. um, the Lamench configuration. Proof that I'm not a real Hellraiser fan. <laughs> That's not what it's called. Um, uh, and I just loved the concept of this character who also in his um, his cursed card or whatever it's called um, punishes you for playing him exactly the way I think you should be playing him. Uh -huh. And I love that even the flavor of it is like, buddy, you've spent way too long in that mystic magic state. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I loved it. Uh, so Luke is a very fun investigator to play. He's very powerful. He's tr one of Travis's favorite, if not like Travis's favorite. Um, he has, uh, his ability is insane. Being able to just leave a location is, and just like fly away, is just like so powerful. He truly does sometimes feel like an eldritch monstrosity. That is a very apt description for him. Uh, and I also think he's very playable for new players as well. There's a lot of advanced things you can do with him, but for a new player, it doesn't matter, right? You can just have fun being Luke Robinson, go in your gate box when you want to, playing events at adjacent locations. Uh, so I think that's another great, uh, great investigator choice for you to play for your first time. Stella, I still think of these options is probably the best one to just start with because she'll teach you the game in the most forgiving way, right? But I think that like Luke, Safina, and Diana are all great choices as well. I noticed that you're you're drawn to like the mystical side of it too. There is there is some of that, but I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But it is it was really cool because I didn't ask for Eric's opinions while they were going through the binder and choosing investigators. I was just writing down the names that you said. Uh, so it was cool hearing for why you were drawn to each of them because it also kind of all makes sense for how I know you. You like Luke because of Luke's flavor, right? Yeah. Like that's the big, and like that's where you should start, right? That's where you should start. I'm not mad that you didn't choose any of my favorite investigators, but you chose a favorite investigator from Britain Travis. I'll, we'll, we'll move past that. It's okay. It's Min okay. almost made it. Min is one of my favorites. Min mm. and Skids both almost made it. The it's, problem with them was that they were too simply good. Yeah. That was my biggest issue with you them. Wanna, you wanna be challenged a bit. Yeah. Skids is very bad. Oh, <laughs> Skids has argued uh, most caught like I would say there's no investigators in this game that are like outright unplayable like because I think every investigator can work and that's the power of the game the player card pool is so big now that you can kind of just do what you want with it 
Uh, but Skids is probably the one that's most universally agreed to be the worst investigator. Probably, most likely. Yeah. Okay, I thought Skids might be one of your favorites. Because no. Skids seems like a Justin thing where you have like an extra resource pool that you can use to do other things. No, no, no. My, 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 actually, my investigators that I like the most are basically the most simple and down to like, they can get going immediately. That's why I like Survivor because they can play very, as Travis says, low to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone watching at home. Um, as I said, Eric and I are going to start doing content. And if you want to see more content with Eric, let me know in the comments. Um, because already Eric's perspective on the game is really cool for, like as I said, this is just so new to me. It's like, I, I, it's like, it brings excitement to the game for me to have fresh eyes and experience. And I want to do a video if Eric approves and chat and YouTube, you want it. But I would love for, um, before Eric and I start playing, putting some cards in front of Eric and having Eric, uh, evaluate them. And then we can look back after you play it and maybe revisit those evaluations. I think that could be really fun. So if you want to see that, let us know. Uh, and, and thanks for doing this video, Eric. I'm excited for you to play one of those investigators as we actually start playing the game. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.